The midterm elections were expected to have uh, substantial losses for Democrats, but I think the magnitude of those losses in the Senate and the inability of Democrats to win a lot of governor's seats came as uh, quite a surprise to most analysts, myself included. It was surely going to be a rough night for Democrats, but what ended up happening was a wave that lined up really with Democrats' worst, uh, uh, worst chances. Voter turnout played a substantial role. Uh, by the latest tally, turnout was around 36%, which is the lowest uh, amount of turnout in a midterm election since World War II. That has sub significant and substantial results for the outcome of elections. In general, when voter turnout is low, Republicans do better in elections. When voter turnout, turnout is higher, Democrats tend to do better, and it should come as no surprise then that some of the uh, lowest turnout in modern American history lined up with some of the largest success the Republican Party has seen in Congress. U.S. foreign policy can uh, be affected in substantial ways, uh, but in large part that, that effect happens because of changing presidential priorities. The Congress, while it plays some foreign policy role, is really secondary to the White House's desires and vision. And so in that sense, a change in Congress is going to have limited effects on American foreign policy in a direct way. That said, foreign policy presents an opportunity for the president to work across the aisle with Republicans. And if he's willing to be open and listen to what Republicans have to say, he may find the type of common ground that would lead to certain changes in direction, not substantially, not significantly, not in a manner that is dramatically opposed to what President Obama's foreign policy has been, but minor changes to the areas of the world in which attention is paid or the types of trade policies that are focused on. That may come as a result of these elections. In 2016, it looks quite bright for Democrats. Democratic, uh, demographic trends, increases in turnout, the types of individuals who turn out in presidential elections, and just the manner in which the Electoral College lines up looks good for Democrats. In addition, it appears that they have a Democratic nominee who will face little, very little primary opposition, whereas Republicans will face a fairly robust primary process. In that sense, Democrats look quite good for, us, for continued success in winning the White House. For Republicans, however, they face a, a few challenges beyond demographics and beyond having a divisive primary. They also now control both houses of Congress, and Americans expect them both to govern from a legislative process and to work with the president to try to overcome some of the challenges facing the United States. If Republicans are unable or unwilling to do that, they'll likely pay the price at the ballot box, not just at the presidential level in 2016, but in the number of Senate seats that are up uh, that year as well. In 2016, um, two dozen Republican senators uh, will face re-election, or those seats will be up for re-election. That creates a real advantage for Democrats to pick up seats and a real challenge for Republicans trying to defend them.